As the world watched, Russia attacked its neighbor Ukraine earlier this year, destabilizing a continent that has been mostly peaceful since the German surrender at the end of World War II. As we follow the fighting in horror, many of us ask important questions, and in this series about the Russian-Ukrainian war, we will explore the following. What is the historical relationship between Russia and Ukraine? What has the recent relationship between the two countries looked like? Why did Russia attack Ukraine? What is the West doing about it? What impact has the war had on the people of Ukraine and the larger global community? And what are some possible outcomes of the war? In this video, we focus on the first two questions with the other questions being explained in following videos. As we all hope for peace, let's take a look at this horrible event and pray for those most affected, the innocent victims of Ukraine. The histories of Russia and Ukraine have been connected on and off for the past 1,000 years. Both countries trace their cultural heritage back to the Kiev and Rus, a large and loose federation of people living in Eastern and Northern Europe from the late 9th to the mid 13th century. Its political center was Kiev, the current capital of Ukraine. Over time, the Kiev and Rus declined and eventually fell due to several factors including the breaking into smaller rival city-states in a Mongol invasion. The histories of the two nations then split for several centuries, with the Grand Duchy of Moscow uniting the northern lands of the Rus and eventually evolving into Russia. Around the same time, Ukraine came under the control of three foreign powers. The Mongolian Golden Horde, who eventually made way for the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Kingdom of Poland and the Crimean Khanate. But some of the ancestors of present-day Ukrainians chose to live outside of these political lines. With the introduction of serfdom from the outside powers, many living in and around the area of Ukraine refused to become subjects to a foreign power and moved into the sparsely populated areas of the Ukrainian and Russian steppes, where they formed a free and semi-nomadic society known as the Cossacks, a group of people that has formed the greatest part of Ukraine's identity to this day. Allying with whomever suited them at a given time, they parlayed their military aid into being able to live under self-rule an inspiration to modern Ukrainians who want independence. An independence Russia does not want them to have. More on that in a bit. After a 1648 rebellion of the Cossacks against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Cossacks sought a union with Russia, a people they had religious, cultural, and language ties with. The sides agreed to the Treaty of Peryaslav in January of 1654. But over time, much of Ukraine's territory was gradually annexed by the Russian Empire and the Cossacks' autonomy was taken away by the late 18th century. While Russia consolidated their strength within their country, outside influences weakened their autocratic rule. Emerging Enlightenment ideas of self-determination and losses in the Crimean and the Russo-Japanese wars left questions as to how strong Russia really was. Things came to a head in 1917 when Russia exited World War I to fight a civil war that would completely change their political outlook. Ukraine Ukraine sought freedom from Russia at this time, and within the bigger conflict, the Ukrainians fought the Ukrainian war for independence. The dynamics were chaotic, with as many as six separate armies fighting within present-day Ukraine's borders, each with a different aim. Ukraine's hope for independence ended, and they eventually submitted to becoming a founding member of the Soviet Union. Under Soviet rule, Ukraine became a center of industrialization and natural resources for the rest of the Union, who exploited their resources. During the early 1930s, in one of the greatest humanitarian crises in history, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin created land reforms that caused the Great Soviet Famine, known in Ukraine as the Holomodor, an event that killed between 3.5 and 10 million Ukrainians. The causes and reasoning for the man-made famine are disputed to this day, but since 2006, the Holomodor has been recognized by Ukraine alongside 15 other countries as a genocide against the Ukrainian people carried out by the Soviet government. While present-day Ukraine remained a part of the Soviet Union for another 60 years, the killing of millions of Ukrainians at the hands of the Soviet government was clearly not forgotten. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, Ukraine became an independent country in August of 1991. In December of the same year, voters approved the referendum supporting independence from the Soviet Union. Over 90% of Ukrainians voted for independence, with a majority declared in every region. Despite being free, there were disagreements over who Ukraine should ally with beyond its borders. A disagreement that would eventually lead to severe consequences in the modern times. 
13 years into independence under the leadership of two presidents led to mixed results for Ukraine, setting up a presidential election in 2004 with two candidates that wanted to set Ukraine down two very different paths. On one side, there was Viktor Yanukovych, who was supported by both the former President Kuchma and by the Russian Federation, supporting closer ties with Russia. In the other corner was Viktor Yushchenko, who called for Ukraine to turn its attention westward and to aim to eventually join the EU, a proposition Russia has since proven it will not allow. In the runoff election, the Russian-backed Yanukovych officially won by a narrow margin, but Yushchenko and his supporters alleged that vote rigging and intimidation cost him many votes, especially in the Russian-speaking eastern Ukraine. This led to massive street protests in the capital of Kyiv and other cities, in an event known as the Orange Revolution. The Supreme Court of Ukraine ordered the election revolts null and void, and a second runoff found Viktor Yushchenko the winner. Under Yushchenko's leadership, Russian and Ukrainian relations began to strain due to Yushchenko looking to move closer to the European Union, many of its members traditional rivals of the old Soviet Union. By the time of the next presidential election in 2010, President Yushchenko and Yulia Tymoshenko, who were allies during the Orange Revolution, had become political enemies. Their schism led Tymoshenko to run for president against both Yushchenko and the Russian-backed Viktor Yanukovych, creating a three-way race. Yushchenko, whose popularity had plummeted during his term as president, lost in the first round of elections, and the split in Orange Revolutionist loyalties led many to just not voting. The second round of the election, the Russian-backed Yanukovych won the runoff ballot by 3%. The Yanukovych administration predictably worked to move closer to the Russians. He also made some highly questionable moves, such as attempting to centralize power and the 2011 sentencing and imprisonment of his political rival Yulia Tymoshenko, an act defined as political persecution by many other countries, including the United States and Russia. It wasn't even safe to defend her in court, with her lawyer being accused of car theft, robbery, and failing to obey a court ruling stemming from his divorce. In November of 2013, President Yanukovych did not sign the Ukraine-European Union Association Agreement and instead pursued closer ties with Russia, angering the majority of Ukrainians and again leading to protests on the street of Kyiv. And eventually the five-day revolution of dignity, a deadly series of clashes between protesters and Ukrainian security forces which led to over 100 dead and the ousting of elected President Viktor Yanukovych, who was nowhere to be found, turns out he was hiding in Russia, and the overthrow of the Ukrainian government. It was the second time the Russian-backed Yanukovych was stripped of power and the Ukrainian people made it clear that the majority wanted closer ties with the West, not Russia. In retaliation, the night Ukraine deposed Yanukovych, Russian President Vladimir Putin held an all-night meeting which ended with the decision to take over Crimea. Four days later, massed Russian troops without insignia took over the Supreme Council or Parliament of Crimea and captured strategic sites across the Crimean Peninsula. Ukraine and many other countries condemned the annexation and consider it to be a violation of international law. To this day, Russia controls Crimea while the rest of the world sees Crimea as Ukrainian land controlled by Russia. In April 2014, pro-Russian separatists in the eastern region of Donbas declare independence. Some 15,000 people have been killed since 2014 in the fighting between the separatists and the Ukrainian army. The early part of the 21st century shows us exactly what has happened and what is currently happening between Ukraine and Russia. The majority of Ukrainian people have shown time and again that they would like to move away from Russian influence and closer align with the West. Russia, and more specifically Vladimir Putin, has shown he will stop at nothing to keep that from happening. Over the next couple years, the relationship between the two countries continued to deteriorate with Ukraine suspending the military cooperation agreement with Russia, closing its airspace to all Russian planes and banning Russian artists from entering the country. Tensions again boiled over between the nations in early 2021 when current Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky appealed to U.S. President Joe Biden to let Ukraine join longtime Russian rival NATO. In February, his government froze the assets of opposition leader Viktor Medvedchuk, the Kremlin's most prominent ally in Ukraine. Soon after, Russia began massing troops near Ukraine's borders in what Putin said were training exercises, though no one believed them. A few months later, satellite images showed the ongoing buildup of Russian forces near Ukraine, with estimates soon surpassing 100,000 troops deployed. In December 17th of 2021, Russia presented security demands including that NATO pull back troops and weapons from Eastern Europe and to bar Ukraine from ever joining. On January 24th, 2022, NATO put its forces on standby and reinforced Eastern Europe with more ships and fighter jets. 
Two days later, Washington responded to Russia's security demands, repeating a commitment to NATO's open-door policy while offering a pragmatic evaluation of Moscow's concern. Two days later, Russia says its demands were not addressed. In February of 2022, amid growing Western fears that Russia could attack Ukraine, the United States said it would send 3,000 extra troops to NATO members Poland and Romania. Washington and allies said that they would not send troops to Ukraine, but they warned of severe economic sanctions if Russian President Putin took military action. It's February 21st of 2022, in a TV address, Putin says that Ukraine is an integral part of Russian history and has a puppet regime managed by foreign powers. Putin then orders what he called peacekeeping forces into two breakaway regions in eastern Ukraine after recognizing them as independent. The next day, the United States and Britain and their allies sanctioned Russian parliament members, banks, and other assets in response to Putin's troop order. Germany halted the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline project. In the following days, the Russian-backed separatist leaders asked Russia to help repelling aggression from the Ukrainian army. Putin authorized special military operations in Ukraine on February 24th of 2022, with Russian forces beginning missile and artillery attacks, striking major Ukrainian cities, including the capital of Kyiv. Keep an eye out for the next video in this series in which we explore the following questions. Why did Russia attack Ukraine and what is the West doing about it? Thanks for watching and being a part of our global community. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my